Anyone diagnosed with inclusion body myositis will most likely have had a manual muscle test administered by a doctor or physical therapist. You may also have noticed they jot down a number on their chart for each segment of their evaluation. In this video, we will identify what those numeric entries mean. Hi, Jerry here again for my IB Myositis viewers, a channel dedicated to anyone caring to learn about the disease called inclusion body myositis or IBM. In this episode, I will explain how gravity and non-gravity tests are used to evaluate our various muscle groups. Anyone new to this channel is invited to subscribe to this non-monetized channel to show their support and to be notified of future episodes. Stay tuned, my IBM friends. Muscle weakness is a very common complaint for a lot of patients presenting to their family care doctor's office. As in my office visit about my muscle weakness back in late 2006, my family doctor referred me to an orthopedic specialist. Although my weakness characteristics were unclear, even to the orthopedic specialist, adding frustration for me as the patient, a comprehensive evaluation continued and included a thorough examination and coordination of appropriate laboratory, radiologic, and electromyography, or EMG testing. Baffled by the results, the orthopedic specialist referred me to a neurologist. The rest is history. True muscle weakness is defined as a decrease in muscle power over time and is identified by what is called manual muscle testing. The examiner assesses the strength of each muscle group by determining how much force is needed to overcome maximal contraction. First individual tests are administered using gravity as a resistance. If those tests show a low score, for example, the body might be turned and the limb remeasured without the weight of gravity affecting the outcome. One hand of the examiner applies resistance or feels the muscle or tendon for contraction, while the other hand stabilizes the extremity being tested to keep it in the test position. There is a grading system ranging from a 5 to a 0 that is used to describe their findings in muscle evaluations and records the initial reaction of your muscle in each particular test with a score of 5 being the best score possible. 5 is normal power against resistance. 4. Power decreased but limber joint movement is possible against resistance. 3. Limber joint movement against gravity only. 2. Limb or joint movement is possible only with gravity eliminated. 1. A flicker or trace of muscle contraction. And 0. No muscle contraction. Be mindful that the scores may be different between your left and right arm, your left or right leg. As we all know, IBM is not always symmetrical. You may also see some two or three letter abbreviations being used to identify the area or muscles being graded. Not every muscle group will be tested by your therapist or doctor during your evaluation. My doctor and physical therapist both state that I should not be attempting to transfer or stand because of the weaknesses in my quad muscles that facilitate the control of my knee joints, but my stubbornness has allowed me to find a way. Gravity and without gravity can be manipulated and used to our advantage even when our FRS score indicates we are at 2.0 on my birthday in mid-August 2020. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I have no scientific proof that what I am about to say has any validity, but in studying my manual muscle test result criteria, I wonder how or if my IBM journey as I entered into stage 3 on the functional rating scale correlates with the ability of limb movement with or without gravity. In my case, as I look at my FRS spreadsheet, I'd have to say there might be a correlation between the results of my manual muscle testing and my entering the third or severe stage from my annual functional rating scale. It was the 2016 to 2017 time frame that my MDA clinic physical therapist saw the need to switch to non-gravitational tests on my arms the same year I crossed into that stage 3 threshold. My leg kickout was already non-measurable at that time. Knowing how your muscles react to gravity and non-gravity resistance may help you avoid some of your limitations 
when reaching the stage 3 point in your IBM journey. The ability to use your core trunk muscles can help situate your arms and legs so that they can be moved in a non-gravitational axis. Sure enough, when I analyze what little I can do with few muscles I have, I realize that most of my activity now surrounds the use of my limbs in a non-gravitational direction only. When eating, I prop my elbows on the table or on the armrest of my power chair, allowing my arm to be moved in a non-gravitational direction and also leaning back during the food transfer to assist getting food into my mouth. Well, there you have it. A short explanation of how your IBM doctor or physical therapist documents the manual muscle test to evaluate your progression of your IBM disease. There are many explanation videos on YouTube that if watched will help you understand what the examiner is doing during your test. Knowing about this test might help you understand exactly what they are looking for in this manual muscle test and allows you to basically understand that score of a 1 to 5 you witness the therapist or doctor write on their form. I sincerely want to thank all my IB Myositis channel viewers, many of which have been subscribers for more than three years. Sharing my information with you consumes a lot of my time, but makes my days, weeks, months, and years seem a lot shorter. I appreciate all the kind words extended to me regarding these videos, and I'm happy to hear that my information is a help to so many people with IBM, their caregivers, and their families and friends. Please subscribe if you have not already done so, as well as give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video series. You have my permission to share this and every IB Myositis video with anyone you care to share with. Again, thank you my friends. Have a safe day.